Hello everyone. The Spine of Deathwing encounter from the Dragon Soul raid is by far the most difficult of all the raid encounters to do, whether you're solo or in a group. In this video, I'm going to give you the definitive guide to how to solo this the easy way. Whether you're brand new to this encounter, or if you're someone who's tried it lots of times before but struggled to do it in a reliable way, by the end of this video, you're going to be fully equipped to go straight into Dragon Soul and take Deathwing down a first time, every time. Now, back when I first started to do this particular encounter, I must admit I probably took me well into double figures before I was able to do it. Um, I looked at quite a few video guides which talked about a technique where you had to move from side to side on the back of the boss and I tried to and, and pretty much I would just get it wrong and I would get thrown off. Now from having read through a lot of wowhead comments, written guides, video guides, I eventually figured out a way of doing it that doesn't involve any special timing or moving from side to side and in fact which allows you to just stand in one spot for the most part. Now I've, I haven't seen this being fully documented or explained anywhere. I know that there are quite a few people in the community who are aware of this so I thought I'd pull together a complete video guide and how you actually do it so that we can share that knowledge out there and hopefully help those of you who've struggled with this encounter to get it done. So let's start getting into the counter. Now before we go straight into the instructions and how to do it, there are a few little bits of preparation that I do recommend that you do. If you don't have a boss mod add-on like DBM or Bigwigs, then I strongly recommend that you do install one before you go into that. Those add-ons will help you spot when Deathwing is going to roll and that will make the encounter a lot easier to time and to track. If you don't currently use either of those add-ons, I'd recommend getting a hold of DBM. Of the two, it's a little bit more in your face. In this video, I'm going to be using Bigwigs because that's what I currently use. And if you do currently use Bigwig, it's perfectly fine for this encounter. Another prerequisite that you want to do is if you're a pet class, you will want to dismiss your pet for this encounter. It's really important that you don't have anything firing off random abilities at random times because they will be end up killing ads that you you know don't want to kill at that particular point. And on that subject, if you have any trinkets or any other things on your character that might proc random kind of abilities or, or random like damage abilities you should move those and just adjust your talents now just before we dive in and i start the encounter in this video i will explain a little bit of how the encounter works now the main thing that gives people the problem on deathwing is that he was originally designed to require a raid to try and evenly distribute themselves across the back if if the game detects an imbalance in the number of players on either side of Deathwing, then he'll roll. You don't actually visibly see him roll, which is one of the things that makes this so challenging. You get very little warning that it's happening, but when he does do his roll, you get thrown off, you get one shot, and the counter ends. Now, to help with dealing with that... Um, one of the mechanics was that there are these tentacles and when you kill the tentacles, you can stand in the pit and that anchors you to the back. Now, I when I do this, I managed to figure out a way where I could reliably just stand in those pits and be perma-anchored to the boss and that meant that I didn't need to do running from side to side. We could just let Deathwing roll and it'd all be fine. Now, the only thing to be aware of is that some of the ads, not all of them, but some of the ads that we need to rely on the fight can get thrown off the back as well. Now, that actually doesn't turn out to be a problem as long as we carefully time when those ads spawn. And the good thing is we do have full control over that. And that's one of the things I will be covering in this video. Now, when you do this yourself, 
the mechanics do mean that there are certain times where you do have to perform a series of actions in a certain period of time. It's not a very short period of time, so it's not anything like a reaction time test, but you do need to be giving it your full int attention. Um, so it's definitely not a time in this counter to be running off to get bios and if you've got kids make sure that they're you know they're all to bed and they're not going to disturb you that your cats aren't going to come up and walk on the keyboard and yeah I completely deny that anything like that has ever happened I'm a gaming god and nothing like that has ever happened so I'm just like telling you stuff I've seen from other people I absolutely definitely not are seeing any of this from experience but anyway so let's get ourselves ready and let's dive into the encounter itself okay so let's get going we say justice and glory to sky captain Swayze there confirm the encounter and off we go and um, you'll see me like trying to decide whether to cancel this cinematic or not in the end i decide to leave it up but yeah you can just cancel it doesn't matter now when we actually spawn in the encounter area which we'll see just about, wait for it, now, um, I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to spot his head, so that was his head, the other end was his tail, and I now kill the two tentacles at the back end, and one of the tentacles at the front, and I then run into this pool, what this pool will do is it will anchor me to the back of Deathwing, so I don't need to worry about being thrown off, now those three big ads that have spawned, those ads will become important later, but these will get thrown off in the next roll. Um, but I'm not worried about that because we can get more of the ads to spawn. What I'm actually doing just now is I'm waiting to get around 12 Corrupted Bloods. Now, I only actually need 9 in reality, but I've found that it's a lot safer using the technique I use if you have a few more. Um, it makes it much more reliable. But once I've got 12 of these bloods, what I then need to do is I then need to kill these bloods and they'll leave a residue behind. And I want to kind of clump that residue up. I'll then kill the tentacle. That'll cause one of the big adds to spawn. And then I need to bait that big ad through the residue that the blood's left. That'll cause him to pick up stacks. And when he gets to nine stacks, he'll grow big. And if I kill him once he's grown big, he'll give off an ability called Nuclear Explosion, and that will remove one of the plates and death wings back. Now, the first time you do this, it's a bit slow because they spawn quite slowly, but later on in the spite fight, they do spawn a lot faster, so it gets a bit faster. So I'm just at the moment monitoring how many I've got, and when I get to 12, what I will then do, you'll see me, I'm kind of trying to count them there. When I get to 12 of them, I'll wait for another roll. And one of the keys to my technique is, before I do anything, I wait until just after a roll's happened. Because I know then I've got like about 30 seconds or so before the next roll, plenty of time. So just being patient and waiting until those rolls happen makes the fight a lot easier. And now what I'm doing is I'm moving out, I'm trying to get them positioned between the tentacle and my safe spot, and then I AOE them down, I move back to my safe spot, and I'm now waiting for the next roll. I can see from my timer, yep, the roll's just come in in about 10 seconds, and then once the roll starts, I'll wait for the roll cast to just about finish, and then I'll target and hit the tentacle. Now, when I hit this tentacle, a tentacle appeared right under me, now that puts me at risk of being thrown off, but what I'm doing here is I'm waiting for the big guy. Does he get big? Yep, there he goes. He got big. I kill him. He does his cast. I'm now quickly running over to the other safe zone. I wouldn't have needed to do that if the tentacle had appeared. And there he's exploded. We've now seen that we've got this tendril. I target it. I kill the tendril and the Deathwing loses a plate. All I really need to do now is repeat this process three times. First of all, just wait for the next roll to I know it's safe to move. Kill the tendril that's opposite me. And then once I'm happy it's safe to move, I'll run over now and I'll kill a tendril at the front and I'll get in the safe zone. Now, what I'm actually doing in this video is I'm going to deliberately fail in a moment. 
And I'm going to do that to show you how to recover if you don't manage to get the guy to nine stacks so he doesn't, he gets big. Sometimes, you know, you might miss, you might only get seven, eight, and then he'll get throw off. What do you do then? Well, what I'm basically going to do is, and um, you'll just see me, I'm um, just waiting a couple of minutes. There you go. I did a quick AOE and I destroyed the tendril by accident. Oops. So what I now do is I just kill other tendrils. Every time you kill a tendril, a new one appears. One's appeared at the front. It's on the opposite side, but it really doesn't matter what side you actually do it on. So I'm just waiting now because I know he's about to roll. And as soon as it's safe, I'm going to move back into position at the opposite side on the front. Uh, I get lucky here. I get the tendril I wanted right away. Sometimes you have to kill quite a few tendrils until one appears at the front. It's just RNG. But now we're on the second part of it. The bloods are spawning really quickly, so I don't need to wait for any long at all. Just waiting for a couple more to spawn. And then you'll see me run out of the pool. I'll wait until just after a roll. There's a roll about to happen here. And then I'll repeat that process. I'll AOE them down. There we go. I'm running out, getting in position, AOEing them down. There you go. Plenty of residue in the ground. Should be easy peasy. Target the tendril. I'm waiting for the next roll. Always wait to the next roll. Don't take risks. There's no need to rush it here. There's just plenty of time. So there we go. When's the roll going to happen? There it is. The roll's being cast. As soon as the cast finished, I'll pop off my ability. There we go. Big guy appears. Come on, big guy. Are you going to spawn? Yeah. Yeah. Wait for him to come in. Wait for him to get in nine stacks and get big. There we go. Kill him. Plate gets dislodged after he does his cast. Wait for that. Yep, here we go. Kill the tendon. And now I'm immediately just targeting the tendril over there. That's the one I'm going to actually kill next. I'm just again waiting for the roll to happen. I realize at this point I've I didn't actually need to wait, I had plenty of time, so I just kill it and run it over. But again, don't take risks with this, just, you know, just take your time. The easiest way for this to go wrong is to just lose track of the rolls and, and kind of just rush it. So the rolls counted down, I'm using the boss mod there, I could just view the timer. There we go, he's rolling, I'm waiting for the cast to finish. So many, they're spawning so fast, the bloods now. That I could probably run out. Yeah, I am running out this time. And there you go. AOE it down. Run back into the safe zone. Get the camera. Get ready. Target the tendril. Wait for the next roll. So just, again, just being nice and patient. Not rushing it. But always being ready for when those rolls finish. There's the roll cast going. Da, da, da. We now hit it. There's like 22 residue on the ground. So here we go. I've got him targeted. Not going to hit him. Just wait for him to get big. Don't rush. Don't target him too soon. There he goes. Hit him. There's his cast. It's now all over. Like that was the hard bit done. We just need to get this tendril. Hit that. Bang. Pop. That's it. We've actually defeated the fight. Deathwing. He's not dead yet. But yep. Thrall does his, like, magic, all of the stuff in the cinematic that we don't really care about. I, I could easily have cancelled this cinematic because the fights, like, we've defeated Deathwing. Believe it or not, you've actually done it. First time ever. Feels really great the first time you do it. And there we go. We're coming down. Now... I'm just going to continue for the sake of completeness and show you the final part of this fight, which is Madness of Deathwing. It's the final boss encounter. It's a hell of a lot easier, really easy, but, you know, we'll, we'll just show you if you've never seen it before because it can be slightly confusing the first time you do it. So I spoke to Thrall there. There's a little bit of, like, RP waffle. One of the things about Dragon Soul and... By the time you get to Deathwing, you'll know all about this. It's one of those raids that had just a ton of non-skippable RP. Really great. Yeah, 
great storytelling first time you go through it, but when you're on your like hundreds or so attempt of this, it gets a bit wearing. Thankfully these days we see less of that. So there we go. This is actually started. So what actually happens now, you get three of these big arms appear. So I'm just targeting, I'm killing the arm. Once the arm's gone, I'm then going to use these winds to float over to the next platform, kill the arms over that side. And then I need to get to the other platform that's right over the other end. So you see me just jumping along there. Is the one in that platform? No, there's not. We jump along to here. We kill the arm. There we go. Third arm. Deathwing now spawns. I, I start targeting Deathwing and trying to attack him here, but he's it's, it's just the way he's kind of landed. He was a little bit awkward in this fight. So I'm moving back to the middle platform where it's a bit easier to target him. Get him dead. And once he's dead, I then just jump back to the starting platform. And that big burning scale thing is the loot. Uh, the game hasn't realized I've actually defeated them yet. There's some more RP going on. So I'm just waiting now for that to finish, after which I'll have loot the, be able to loot this fight as well. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I hope this will show you a slightly different way to do this encounter. A way that I feel that with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to get down and be able to kill them quite reliably. When I first figured out this way of doing it, I didn't immediately get it right, Imme you know, first time. It took me still a few attempts to practice it, and it does take, I think, a little bit of work to really become proficient at that. So don't be put off if it doesn't work first time for you. Just keep trying a few times. Trust me, you will get it down. Uh, Deathwing, of course, gives a total of three mounts, two random drops. But there's also a third mount from the Glory Achievement, which is easy to solo once you've got Deathwing figured out. I think it just takes four runs in total to complete. But anyway, I will wish you a lot of good luck with your mount. So if you've got any thoughts or any tweaks we can make to this process to make it even easier, do use the comments down below to tell us all about them. I'd be really interested to hear what you say. And if you found this type of video, a, a guide video useful, it's a bit different from the stuff I've been doing in the channel up to now, do let me know by hitting the like button. That oh, that does a huge amount for the channel. Um, and if you want to see similar guides or other types of videos, as soon as they go live in the future, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon down below through so you get notified. And finally, if there are any particular guides, any sort of collecting sort of guides, things that you're not clear about or you'd like me to do a guide on, do mention that in the comments below. It's something that I might well consider. I am at the moment looking for more ideas of what I can do in this type of content for the future. But for now, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you soon.